still coming strong. Before you say anything though, I know some people are gonna think that I should be doing anime in general, but here's the thing. I wanted to do anime in general when it comes to my favorites and least favorite anime, and sometimes I want to talk about something that says Jojo and Josie Eye demographic, but I don't want to rip off something from Robin from Anime America or Colleen, if anything, to judge by because both those women could do so much better in those topics than I could ever have, though. The main reason why I'm doing Magical Girl shows is mostly because it's my passion, and first and foremost, it's really because it's my favorite genre. Because, let's be honest, I still love this genre to this day. And even when they reinvent the genre. See, back when I said in the previous episode, I said before we'll be doing a their clamp series and as you can tell that day has come and before you say anything though i think this will be my time to say something right here and now while i do appreciate doing clamp works and everything though i don't want to say that as i want to stop talking about them necessarily though but sadly though there hasn't been a lot of things i could talk about this demographic because well to be honest though i don't really know where to begin with this i mean clamps history it goes well beyond anyone's knowledge so let's go on to some backstory back in 1989 back when and they were starting out though clamp actually had a work that was around a dark shoujo demographic series and for those who don't know dark shoujo basically means it's still shoujo demographics just with more dark edges to it though and i mean this with no exaggeration that i still enjoy whatever i have seen from the shoujo demographic but I do realize that some of the works don't always go what it has, though. For their first work they ever did, Rig Veda, which is a work that I did watch of theirs when I was doing some research a few months ago for Clamp. But sadly, I didn't really care for Rig Veda. Not that it's a bad series, but the problem was that in the two-part OVA series that we did get, it could have been made if it was made into an animated series, because a lot of things were rushed, the pacing was all over the place, the characters, while one-dimensional, could have gotten more development, and still in all, it didn't really do much for the overarching story. But I don't really fault Clam for this because this was their first work. And when you have your first work, there are going to be a few edges in here and there. Usually a rough draft is going to end up like this, so I can definitely see why that is though. However, years later, five years later specifically, they released a series called Magic Knight Ray Earth, which lasted for two seasons and 49 episodes. And I would be exaggerating if I were hit or miss by saying this though, but this is actually one case where I do appreciate the series more and more though. See, back in 2022, when I was researching for more Magical Girl shows, Magic Knight Ray Earth was one of those that was part of my radar. Shouldn't be much of an issue, except for there was just one little problem with that argument. See, when I first started watching this series, I seem to have gotten a lot of hell for watching this when I was around my folks at the time. Though. I don't know what it is with me getting hell for watching something that's aimed at me for Shoujo and Joe's eye demographic that time, but when it comes to something like Shonen or CNN, I seem to always get the soft spot for it though. I mean, I get that I'm a tomboy, but come on. The series itself had about a long time though but this is one case where while the manga has lasted for six volumes and so many chapters along the way though i confess i haven't read the manga though for those who have read it are probably going to bitch at me for liking the series over the manga even if i haven't read it but it does side effect what it is though the anime hit series was done by tms and if you're familiar with their works this should yeah, it comes no surprise for you they worked on a lot of works like detective Conan, lupin the third as well as the Fruits Basket series of 2019, though. And yes, before you say anything, I watched that series. Not all of it, but what I've seen so far was pretty much amazing to me. They have worked on Western uh, projects as well, though, like Superman animated series, Batman animated series, Tiny Toons, Animaniacs, and as well as another series that I watched last year, Cyber 6. Well, while I have seen... Magic Knight Ray Earth, this would be the part where I would tell you about how I felt when binging through it, except I really can't stress enough how much this would have gotten my record when it came to that though. This series itself was on VHS at the time though, and while I was little and I didn't have any sort of anime 
kind of collection growing up except for my favorite fairy tales not to be confused with fairy tale another series i've watched during my heydays of an anime fan it's worth pointing out that i didn't really know what i was getting into though except i actually didn't mind watching magic name great earth for one season alone which was about 2022 until last year i started watching the second season yeah, I took a long time watching this series entirely, though. But enough about that. Let's get into Magic Knight Ray Earth and see what we have lying in store for us, though. Magic Knight Ray Earth, Earth starts off the series with a character by the name of Princess Emerald, who seems to be calling for the Magic Knights. And while they're not here right now, along the way, we do get to see, though. Cut to Tokyo Tower, as it seems like three of the most popular schools in Tokyo happen to assemble upon there for the first time together okay i get that this is taking place in tokyo but why did it have to be in tokyo tower but as such though the series itself starts to a quick turn on in dust because it seems like a lot of us seem to know what's going on though and keep in mind they have three junior high school girls who are going to this not all of them go to the same school but they manage to go to the a place that we'll be joining in soon now. Ikara Shidu, the red member of the group, Fu Honoji, the green member of the group, and finally Umi Ryuzaki, the blue member of the group, happen to stumble upon each other until getting vaporized into another world known as Sephiro. This is not like Japan in, in a lot of ways, because it's more of a fantasy world more than anything, or in this case, an isekai series. And I'll get to that in a minute, though. But as uh, the girls uh, jump uh, by, by a giant flying fish, though, after getting saved, they immediately uh, get to hiss that there's a strange man who gets from the grand power to become magic knights, though. While, while most of them will uh, do so to do whatever they can to save Princess Emerald, it seems like a lot of us hope to get easier girls and sometimes they've saved the princess. And as such, though, while reluctant to a bit to do so, they still agree to do whatever it takes in order to go back home to Tokyo. Yeah, this is definitely the part where I would complain about it, though, but over the course of the series, this series does you know, do what it can to actually grow these girls a bit. I mean, at first glance, they didn't really start off as friends at first. They really start off as what you may expect, as uh, girls that uh, came from different schools. But I must confess, I actually don't mind this uh, synopsis anyway, though. Clamp is known to have a lot of dark edges in their series, and I think the first time I've ever seen a cameo of them, though, for this, well, for what they get for their weapons, would have to be in Holic when they put an Easter egg and put Hikaru's little sword in yeah, that play there. I have to say, that was a subtle Easter egg, but I'm glad they did it anyways. But speaking of the influence, though, you may have noticed how I didn't talk about what gave some people inspiration for this series. Yeah, I didn't talk about this before, which I'll be getting into right now, so let's go over it though. In case you haven't noticed, this is an isekai series. And for those who are in my audience not familiar with the term, well, isekai series basically means it takes place in another alternate world. Kind of like Inuyasha was with Feudal Japan, where it takes place in a different time era instead of modern Japan. If anything, but honestly, though, I kind of expect this series to go so far as to say they're just gonna find a way to get home right away, like that. I mean, sure, in the first season, we do get to see some glimpses of that, though, but it's no exaggeration, they did a lot with this in Stone Spend of Ponds instead, though. It's also worth pointing out that when it gets right down to it, along the way, though, this series actually. While it didn't really give too many people notifying about it, though, I have to confess, I wasn't expecting myself to enjoy this series when it got a lot of influence by different creators. Yeah, Darren Epsey, who gave a star versus the Force of Evil, which, yeah, spoiler alert, that will be coming this month. I have to fully admit, though, I think the reason why she got inspired by this is because it took place in another dimension, and the other creator being... Ray Rodriguez, who gave us High Going Spice. Yeah, I'm still iffy if I want to do that series in October, but I'll probably do it on the three-year anniversary, though. Though, honestly, I wouldn't say it would be an anniversary to give us that crap series, but that's beside the point. Anyways, while the, the girls do everything they can to make sure that they get to hold 
for themselves to make sure that they go through it though there are of course obstacles in the series not only do they have to go through a lot of challenges and to fight off different creatures but they also have different characters along the way though Furio who yeah, Firo, who happens to and someone upon these girls comes first, though, and he's the younger brother of Princess Emerald, which doesn't get explained until season two of the series. And I have to be honest, though, at first glance, I thought Firo would go so much to go heads to head when it comes to something like, say, Hey Umi, because of how both they can look very attractive to each other. But surprisingly enough, Firo uh, seems to be more approached to Fu, if anything, though. He also uh, gives them a stone, which actually gives them a wish to do something already though but it goes as well as you expect though honestly though while the series does sound like it's gonna go into a serious mode which we'll uh, we'll admit they do do have serious moments at first glance it starts off comedic at times though so be aware of that though there are other characters like i mentioned clef earlier but he really got turned to stone um, before in yeah, before he can actually announce to the girls what they're going to be doing, so I can't really give you a glimpse on that until, say, season two, where we actually do get to see what we have there. There were other characters, like, say, Makona. Okay, I'm going to say this right here and now. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, because in Holic, which was my first introduction to Clamps, it works. They say Makona in this series, while in that series, they call him Mokona. Yeah, I know they're different and though one in this series is white while the one in Holic is black, but even with that said, that's still confusing. So I'm just gonna call him Makona for simplicity's sake, since that's what they said in the dub. At least in the, the other dub with Wendy Lee in it. Yeah, I'll go to the voice acting in a bit, so let's get on to the other characters. And there's there's also oh, some other characters, like let me say for example, Ascot, who surprisingly finds affection for Umi. Well, I can't really ex explain to that, though, because I'm not the target audience of teenagers. I'm an adult, and I'm going to keep my mouth shut about that, <laughs> though. But honestly, I'm just going to say these girls are, in first and foremost, whatever way you could look at them, I guess you could say. Then there's also uh, Kadina, and I have to be honest, though, I thought at first for a chick like her, she was going to be all, well, sassy and everything. Yeah, she had that trait before, and also... So she loves money, especially the part where she goes, money, 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 in her chibi form. Yeah, I get used to that. Yeah, in the series, they do a lot of chibi forms. So if you're, and if that bothers you, I do apologize for that. But really, I find Keldina a lot better than I thought would have anyway. So that's really something I could say in its own expense, though. Then there's also Perseia. And yeah, I'm going to be honest here, though. At first, I will say Perseia does seem pretty much would you expect for her like this but she's also has a twin sister named Sieta and yeah both of them show oh, that they look exactly alike except for some reason in the second season Sieta the that series that actually said that the only way you could tell them apart is that one of them has a scar on her chest yeah I'm not sure how to simplify that maybe if they gave them different uh, uniforms or different styles, maybe I wouldn't have that much of a problem with it, but seriously, at least Hikaru and uh, Kaoru from Aura, and I can at least tell them apart due to their personalities, somewhat at times, and there's a lot of other characters, like, like and Bolt, oh, Al 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 Alcyone, Alcyone, Alcyone is one of uh, the uh, main villains though, but she doesn't do much until say the second season and I have to be honest though That's you know, where things get really intense though, but surprisingly enough though for an isekai series There's a lot of characters to be happier though, and I'd be hit or miss if I didn't mention this But their own mecha you know, pilots which won't be explored until much later on Actually do have names for themselves. Ray Earth, who is Hikaru's, who is mecha Force, Wyndham is Fu's mecha force, and of course we have Selen, eh, less who is Umi's own effort itself. Though now I honestly have to say though the Rune Gods themselves are pretty creative when it comes right down to it. Though now I will say though they did start off uh, as uh, something that would be useless at first glance, but later on in the series we do get that after the girls finally realize the twist between Emerald because. 
I know this is going to be spoilers, so if you don't want this spoiler for you, just mute this part right here. Otherwise, I can't do much about it, though. So it turns out that, as you can tell, Princess Emerald did not want to be rescued, but she wanted the knights to kill her. Yeah. I mean, I will admit that came out of... Oh, but nowhere, but uh, hey, at least it, the twist itself is uh, pretty much what you expect uh, from a series like Clamp, of all things. They usually do things unpredictable, so I'm glad they didn't go to the cheesy approach with that. However, after her uh, destroying uh, Princess Emron like they're supposed to, because she didn't want to li live anymore, because it turns out she was the main um, antagonist in the first season all along, the girls already retrieve home, and sadly, they feel like their job hasn't been done yet. After grieving uh, some more though, they realize that, yeah, this is one case where the girls feel pretty much what you expect. They feel pretty torn about it, and they have no other choice but uh, to feel uh, guilty about it though. Which honestly, I can't blame them, but it does side effects about how they feel about themselves anyway though. And while they're at uh, their own home after retrieving back from Tokyo Tower, it turns out that their job is still not complete to them themselves, though. Yeah, around season two, all of them grieve in different ways, though. With Hikaru, I'm feeling a little more grief than usual because around her brothers, they, yeah, she, they really think she's yeah, been yeah, mistreated around the field trip. Though I have to say, though, even her brothers can be a bit dorks, but hey, when you have a tomboy character, I think it's yeah, to be expected you have uh, brothers like that. <laughs> and we also got not Umi's side of the family, which she's an only child. Yeah, I'm kind of uh, sad that she doesn't have any siblings because the other girls have siblings. And we also got Fu, who has a sister named Ku. I swear I didn't make that up. That's really what that's, uh, her name is. So you can just draw your own conclusion there, though. Anyways, after the girls go back to Tokyo Tower, they realize that they can just go back to uh, Sephiro just to get their job done as well, though, and be the nights that they have without feeling any more remorse. Except here we actually do get uh, to see that there's more uh, characters in its own self, though. I have to be honest, though, it's really uh, well established that I do like what they do you know, with them in the second season. And apparently a lot of people don't like the second season because for some reason they said that the second season itself is the weakest season, which I'm not sure how it's the weakest season. Granted, I will say though that that the characters do whatever they can for themselves though, but it's really not as um, hammering as you think it is though. Sadly though, there is one character that we get to see a lot more often, Nova. Yeah, Nova is, well, it's coming from me, just like Mei Ling, she's really and known to be, and in case it wasn't obvious, her alter ego. Kind of like had been, and Night uh, Sparkle was for uh, Twilight Sparkle, except less annoying. Yeah, I could not get a read on Nova a lot, though. And like Mei Ling before, and no, she was not in the manga as well, though. What is it with uh, one off characters like that? Oh, wait. Yeah, I think it's safe to say, I don't really have that much of a complaint to say, but hey, at least she's. Yeah, really an alter ego version of Hikaru. Basically, take it like Earthworm Jim with his evil counterpart. Whatever Earthworm Jim likes is what his evil counterpart doesn't like, and vice versa. Yeah, that's basically what you uh, see from there, though. However, there are other characters we do get to see along the way, though. Like, there's these two twin characters, Tatra and Tia. And I'm gonna be honest, though, they're really one that's one more laid back and one that's more... It's, I guess you could say more rambunctious though, but I'm not gonna complain too much about them, but hey, twin characters exist for reasons, I guess you could say. Then we also have some other characters that that's, that also have some come along the way though. Oh, like say Asuka herself though. Now Asuka herself is one character that I'm, I already mentioned her in the Sailor Moon TV from Chibi Usa, but really a lot of people thought she sounded like Betty Boop for some reason. I'm not sure what they thought of that though, but hey, at least got something like that. We also got Lantis, who somehow shows attraction to Hikaru. Time out! I'm not gonna say anything about that, but I'm just gonna say that they're 
partner comes across an adult with a child. I don't want to get any contact with that, so write your conclusions there, though. Oh, though. And we also had Primera, had Primera, and long story short, she's this little fairy, and I would say she's annoying, but thankfully she doesn't get a lot of screen time, so at least we know now how she has for herself, though. But of course, we also got some other characters. Like, say, there's Eagle. Oh, I, and I have to say, that's really the best way I could describe it. Yes, I have to say, though, he does get sick all of a sudden, though, which I'm not sure how he got sick. Maybe because he's too old to do his own job, but hey, if he's... that's whatever you can to help Hikaru out, so I get I can let that know what it is, though. Then we also have, again, Lady Asuka, and I have to say, though, I never... I'm gonna say she's well she, she does laugh constantly and she does do so in an arrogant way though she does grow in you know, the series though and does look up to Fu so I have to say though I didn't think she was that uh, much of a big deal that you think though then we also have uh, of course her servants like Sen Yoon who was who was actually Asuka's uh, loyal servant and childhood friend and also Chang Ang uh, who is also the current ruler uh, though we also do get other characters, though, but I have to say, though, it's not as bad as I thought, though. But then we also have the main other bad guy of the series, Debonair. Yeah, Debonair is you know, one of those characters that I thought at first they were gonna do some you know, you know, more with her, but really she's Nova's mother. Oh my god, it's a mother character. And I thought they said, hey, I am your father or something. You know, if it were funny if they said, I am your mother, maybe it'd be funny, but hey, I'm all for having references that are subtly in, in there, though. Yeah, I didn't mention this before, but also Lantis is the brother of Sagato, who was also one of the main bad guys of, of the first season. Yeah, this series has a lot of it has a lot of characters to be had here, and I'm sure that's what I have to say, though. I don't want to spoil too much about these your characters or the story or anything like that, but I will say, though, the series itself did on a pretty you know, decent note with all things consider. Yeah, it turns out that in this series, they were trying to find out who could be the pillar of all things. But yeah, I'm not going to spoil too much about who was the pillar in the manga because someone I was pointed out, though, in the comments in one video. And also, it's worth pointing out that it's had, though. So with all that said, however, how does the series stack up entirely for itself? Honestly, I think it's fit pretty well. I know I keep going back to TMS all the time, though, but yeah, this animation, while they are known to get better as the series have progressed, though, over time, though, their chibi forms can be a bit of a distracting to some people, though. It kind of reminds me of how I'm watching The Wallflower, where Sanako always goes into her chibi form. Then again, she is a wallflower in that series, so don't be too mad at that for what it's worth, though. And there's also the voice cast itself though. Now the voice cast in of itself does have a lot of characters to be half here, but honestly I'm not gonna go over too many of them, but I will say though they have a lot of characters to be half here. So I'll go over the ones that suck out to me the most. Like the main girls, I'll just say. I already said Asuka's other voice Lady Asuka's voice in and saying that she has the same voice actress as Chibi Usa and yeah that I have to say, though, I can definitely hear that from the English dub. Well, I say English dub, but they said there were, were two English dubs. One original one, and one from this here, which is the one I watched. And to be honest with you guys, I can't find the other one anywhere. But it's also worth pointing out that despite them having somewhat of a, a good translation they he I've heard from people, though, that does not mean that they had to Americanize the names again. Yeah, they Americanized the names by calling Hikaru Lucy. Who they think called the Umi Marine and also have Anatomy or something like that? Yeah, I know that they're trying to Americanize the names and all that stuff, but come on now. It's better off if you just keep the original names. Sorry for getting all bitchy there, but still. Anyways, the three main girls themselves we got Julie Mandela. Yeah, Lena, who voice is Hikaru, and 
Yeah, I'm just gonna say this right here right now. I didn't mention her voice actress in, in the car captain Sakura. You know, but yeah, here she is voiced by the same actress who gave her voice that gave her Mei Ling. And I didn't really recognize it at first glance, but listening to it carefully, I can kind of hear it now. Umi was voiced by Wendy Lee, who I'm sure a lot of my fans have already heard of because she's been in freaking everything. And we also got Bridget Hoffman, who voices Fu. And props to her, though, for having a very gentle lady like Kira. Here to have her own character, though. Then again, she was in Mahoro Maddox, so that's to be expected from here, though. And as for the characters themselves, while I can't really explain how much I really love the series, it did take a while for me to muster up that I started watching the series for myself. Maybe it's the fact that, that I'm just not used to binging all the favorite shows at once anymore, maybe, but I just try my best to do whatever I can to watch them, though. Hell, I just I watched uh, Goku Sin, and I'm still have to say though, at the time of this recording, I already finished it last night though, despite I started it last month though. Now I'm still watching Paradise Kiss again, so that's to be expected and for itself though. Overall though, Magic Knight Ray Earth is a fun series. If you're into something like Isekai and Becca series, I recommend in this series, if anything, judged by them. Maybe it's not going to appeal to you as much as you think it is, though, but I, I confess, though, if you're anyone like me who loves uh, watching something like this series, you really can't go uh, wrong with it, though. Though, it's worth pointing out that while watching this show, it did take a long while for me to do so. And I can't really fault uh, myself for doing so, especially because, not just of work, but also because of other things in that matter. Yeah, as you know, that can tell, it took longer than I expected myself to get part of though. Next time, I'm just gonna leave it on the community post to guess which Magical Girl show I'll be doing. Because <laughs> I really love doing this guessing game to you guys. And props to you guys for answering that. But until then, thank you all so much for listening to this podcast and have a good weekend else. And well, hope Monday. See ya.